Hi everyone, Ian here, and in today's video, I'll be talking about and showing you my pipeline workflow for a film emulation plugin called Dehancer. Now, full disclaimer, Dehancer reached out to me and asked if I'd like to make a tutorial and review on their plugin, but crucially, they wanted an honest review. Therefore, everything I talk about in this video is my own opinion, and it's not being compromised in any way. So first, what is Dehancer? Well, Dehancer is a plugin which aims to replicate and emulate various film stocks, giving the user access to a range of adjustments which can help transform our modern, pristine digital frames into images which feel more organic and in keeping with traditional celluloid film. And it does this by harnessing the inconsistencies and imperfections that so many of us have come to associate with film, such as halation, bloom and grain. And for me and many other filmmakers, these characteristics give the more modern clinical images a personality, which helps provide dimension and depth. And to this filmmaker brings about the same emotional response I get when I shoot with my Fuji GW rangefinder camera. It sees sometimes subtle or sometimes harsh characteristics, depending on what you're trying to emulate, which can really set a frame apart. And in today's digital age, in which we strive for greater resolution and sharper glass and reduced chromatic aberration and less and less digital noise, it can be easy to forget that the film stock choice can be an important driving factor in the tonality and mood of the film, and was once an important decision in the filmmaking process. Just in the same way, for example, as lighting, color profiles, and audio still remains today. So what do I think of it? Well, I like it a lot, and there's a number of reasons for that. First, it's easy to use. I'm using Dehancer version 6.2.0 in DaVinci Resolve, and it was super easy to download and add into the node tree, as it's a simple drag and drop from the effects panel. Each subheading is well laid out, and it's a clean interface which matches DaVinci's UI, and I don't have to jump into a second piece of software or open an additional floating window. It also appears to run smoothly across 4K and 1080p footage. However, I am using a pretty well specced Mac Studio with an M1 Max chip, so different users' miles may vary. But for me, on Apple's more modern chips, it's working pretty efficiently. Now, after a while, I did find that footage would begin to lag when I had a large number of clips on the timeline, and more so when they were intensive file codecs like Intra or H.265. Now, in addition, certain effect parameters such as the film grain would also cause this. However, setting my proxies in DaVinci to half res normally did help mitigate this. In addition, Dehancer also provides an excellent PDF guide which is available on their website and fantastic video tutorials and explanation videos to aid first time users or novices when first stepping foot into the film emulation world. And while there's definitely a bit of a learning curve needed to obtain the results you want, I think the learning curve is far less daunting and confusing when compared to some other emulation packets that I've used in the past. Now, one of the reasons for this is the simplified no tree structure and each heading's adjustability. So what do I think the Dehancer plugin could improve upon? Well, I think an information button next to the different areas, which provides a description of what the area is aiming to do and how it achieves this would be really useful, especially for newcomers and novices who may have never shot with film, or perhaps don't understand what some of the adjustment names mean. Also, I'd prefer if all the adjustment options were disabled at default, as opposed to being enabled, which is what currently occurs. This is because when you first drag the plugin onto your clips, the camera input and output options won't be correctly set. So the image won't be optimized. So normally I just end up turning them off anyway, so I can get to a baseline starting point. This also allows me to enable and build each layer one step at a time to get a better understanding of how the software works and how each section is adjusting to the image. Finally, some of the film stocks can appear a little too strong, especially when paired with the film prints. It would be great to see a strength adjustment bar, which could be used in a similar way as the node keyer button, which already exists in DaVinci's color panel. Now, I know there's a total impact slider already in Dehancer, but this affects all of the adjustment areas, including the grain, halation, and bloom. 
So what I'd really love to see is a slider that only adjusts the film emulation's intensity or the film print's intensity and leaves the other parameters untouched. Now, Dehancer is also available for iOS, and this is available on both the iPhone and the iPad, and it's both a photo and video editor, providing similar functionality and adjustment parameters as the desktop version, with the video area also providing the same film breadth and gate weave options. Each naming structure is the same, and it provides both manual control, but also presets designed by the Dehancer team, which can be really useful for newcomers. This also provides a nice starting point for those who need a faster output, but these can still be adjusted if you want to finesse them. And I think this is something they should definitely look at porting over to the video-centric desktop version. Now, reading through Dehancer's history, I can really appreciate how much research and development they've put into this product and how far it's come since their initial conception and earlier iterations. And overall, I think the iOS app is a really nice counterpart to the desktop variant. And if you already have a good working knowledge of Dehancer, or you're used to shooting with film and maybe scanning your own photos, the learning curve here will be minimal. However, I would like to see some refinement in the app to make the overall user experience a little easier. I'm using it on my iPhone 13 mini, and the app looks clean and is easy to navigate, and the sliders are responsive, but unlike the desktop version, it's harder to make smaller refined adjustments. So I'd love to see a plus and minus button at the end of each slider to make this easier to do. I'd also like to see a reset button like what we have in Resolve across each adjustment, because sometimes I'll forget what the default values were. Now, I know it has an undo button at the top, but I'd really prefer a reset for each individual parameter. Finally, similar to what I suggested for the desktop versions, I think an information button which explains to the user what each parameter is designed to do would be incredibly useful. Now, I know they do have their excellent guide already built into the app, but I have to come out of the editor and go to a separate page within the app to access it, which can be frustrating when I'm trying to edit a clip. So I still think having something like a pop-up window via an information icon next to each subheading would be better. Now, while the iPhone app is quick to export photos, I did find it struggled more with longer 4K video clips, as it took around 30 minutes to export a three minute clip. And my phone also got incredibly warm when doing this. So that's just something to be aware of if you're planning on editing video within the iPhone app. So overall, I think Dehancer is a brilliant application, which I found incredibly enjoyable and easy to learn. But more importantly, it's helped me gain a better working knowledge of the color grading process and pipeline in general. And that's because it's not a one button does it all application. You really need to think about what the image requires and how every subheading is affecting it and why you're making these specific alterations to the image. While one type of lighting and location may look great across a particular type of film stock, another may not look good. So it's about building an understanding of both the film print and its color characteristics, and the camera and exposure values you're making at the time of recording. Then making alterations on a shot by shot and scene by scene basis to really dial in the effect. It'll take subtle adjustment and finessing to achieve the look you want. And this should be something you relish because a software shouldn't just give you all the answers. It should help you learn and understand why you're making those color choices and decisions. And this is something I think Dehancer does really well. Now, there are a lot of film stocks on this list that I've never shot with, so I can't say for certain how true to life they are. However, for me, it isn't always about perfectly replicating a film stock. Although obviously the closer it resembles it, the better but rather it's about replicating the feeling that these film stocks have given me. And it's the same reason why so many of us still love shooting film photography. And while rolls of 35 and 120 are still relatively affordable and easy to process for still images, across a moving image, the reels and cameras required to obtain a high quality negative are much harder to come by or out of the price range of most users. So having a software that enables us to take a small step closer to that is a great benefit. And Dehancer has clearly worked hard on this by developing scanning and printing optically on black and white 
and color photographic paper and building the profiles by excluding film scanners from the chain and instead using direct optical printing on analog media. It's enabled them to interpret the negative more accurately and get more realistic film colors, which is a resource that many normal users such as myself wouldn't have access to. And Dehancer has gone beyond just being a simple color grading application. Areas such as the film grain tool have been a real standout part of the software for me. Its ability to analyze the scene and add grain in a more natural way that adapts to the image itself and allows me to adjust the grain size and the grain strength across different luminance areas, even to the point where it's altering the 3D rotation of the grain granules, makes the process really interesting and fulfilling. I'm actually excited to see the end result when I've finished. And again, I think this is the same feeling I get when shooting with traditional film cameras and receiving my negatives back for the first time. The Halation and Bloom tools also help build this overall nostalgia. Having the ability to adjust how much bloom occurs in post, as opposed to using a fixed filter on set, allows for a range of adjustability and adaptability, and ensures that I can dial in the effect on a shot-by-shot -shot basis, to ensure I don't overpower or distract from the main subject and story. And while it's definitely nice to have the sharpest image on newer lenses with minimal chromatic aberration, there's definitely a lot of character that comes from older lenses which will produce this fringing effect. For example, I shoot with a lot of older Minolta glass and often use them on my newer digital cameras. And whenever I look back at the image taken with them, there's something in the detail and the texture and the colors which just grabs me. And when I first started shooting with older lenses, it was hard to precisely pinpoint what was giving me that feeling. But I think artifacts such as Halation are definitely a part of it. And watching these flat, log clean digital images being transported back onto a similar canvas has just reinforced why I love those images. When grading, there's a fine balance between letting the imperfections create a richness tonality and personality that feels organic and realistic, but at the same time doesn't overpower or muddy the image. And I think in this respect, the Hansa's software achieves this. And even though it's not the cheapest software, I think the layers of control and adjustability available and the results you can get from them are really worth it. And because of that, I'll definitely be using it across future projects. So hopefully this has given you a better understanding of what Dehancer is and why I've enjoyed using it so much. So as always, thanks for watching, keep being creative, and I'll catch you in the next one.